now for Morning Rounds, our look at the medical news of the week, beginning with the use of statins after a heart attack. Patients who suffer heart attacks are often given prescriptions for the powerful drugs, which have been shown to help prevent future heart problems. But are patients following through on the treatment? A recent study in the American Medical Association's Cardiology Journal looked at nearly 58,000 Medicare patients, 66 and older, who were discharged from a hospital following a heart attack. They were given high dosage statin prescriptions within 30 days of leaving the hospital. The primary goal of the study was to see if patients stayed on the statin medication. CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula is here with more. Hi, Tara. Hi, Anthony. Did the people keep up? They did not. They did not. This is very disheartening as a cardiologist, but the adherence rates were not great. And statins are really life-saving medications, not just for patients with coronary artery disease in general, but particularly for patients post-heart attack. And in this study, when they looked at the six-month rate of adherence, it was about 59% who reported being high adherers at six months. That dropped down to about 42% at two years. Mm. When they looked at those over the age of 75, the numbers were similar. At two years, the high, adheres, high adherence rate was around 39%. Not great. So what can you do? I mean, the stakes seem fairly high enough here. What do you need to do to convince people to take their medications? Yeah, the stakes are really high. And, you know, there was a study in 2012 that showed about 20 to 30 percent of scripts are not filled. 50 percent of medications for chronic diseases are not taken as prescribed. And this costs our country hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, so what can we do? A lot of my patients talk about using their pharmacist as a really great resource. Mm -hmm. um, having open lines of communication with your doctor to express your fears and concerns as opposed to just stopping taking your medication in general, getting some education, working with care coordinators, uh, having telephone calls arrive to your home that remind you to take your medication, simplifying regimens, so pill boxes, combining medication times with meal times, yeah. uh, and then lower copays. All of that. Yes. Take your medication. Please. <laughs> All right. Our next topic, sleep before school. I remember this one. Parents and teachers often give the same advice to kids. Get enough sleep. But according to a CDC analysis of surveys, during an average school night, 68% of high schoolers reported getting seven hours or less of slumber. And 32% got eight hours or more. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommends teens 13 to 18 years old get eight to 10 hours on a regular basis. This month, the same group released a position statement regarding school start times for middle and high schools. Okay, I wish I had gotten <laughs> 10 hours of sleep during high school, Tara, but what did the Academy uh, suggest regarding school start times? Yeah, so sleep time is so important for our children. And while we may want them to go to bed at 9 o'clock in the evening or earlier. <laughs> dream on. Dream on. As you know, um, with teenagers, actually their circadian rhythm is delayed. They have delayed secretion of melatonin. So for many of them, it's hard to get to bed before 11 o'clock at night. So by pushing the school start time back to 8.30, you are hope, the hope is that you can get in that 8 to 10 hours uh, that really is recommended. And right now, about 68% percent of teenagers are getting less than seven hours. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that with more sleep, you improve alertness at school, you improve driving safety mm -hmm. uh, and avoidable accidents. You also increase mental health and well-being. Uh, so there are a lot of, of potential good side uh, effects of, of pushing that start time back. It's also an issue of how much homework the teachers give you, by the way, when you get your kid to bed. But that's right. another matter. Um, <laughs> but and, and pushing back the time doesn't necessarily mean better sleep, though, does it? No, and that's where we come in as parents. I mean, yeah. so many adults are really bad about practicing good sleep hygiene. So we need to start to teach our kids at a younger age that this is a priority. Yeah. And so they need to go to sleep in a cool, dark room, mm. turn off devices early so you don't get that blue light that can interfere with the secretion of melatonin. You need to practice uh, going to bed and waking up at the same time every day uh, in addition to weekends and also having a bedtime routine just like we teach our, our little little ones to have a bedtime routine. We need to do that for our teens. Mm -hmm. Sleep is delicious and they need to learn it at a young age. Exactly. It's, it's a never ending battle. It is. <laughs> Finally, texting. It's how many of us communicate, but should we be keeping our backs and necks in mind while doing it? According to a recent article in the Spine Journal, I have a subscription, <laughs> surgeons noted they are seeing more cases of various back and neck issues. And prolonged use of smartphones and texting is considered a possible culprit since when texting, you're often using a forward flexed neck position. That would look like what I'm doing most days <laughs> all day long. It's even led to the term text neck. 
The authors advise caution, especially with children, since cell phone use is starting at young ages while the spine is still developing. They did have some tips for texters, such as holding phones up at or near eye level, like so. I so think. natural. Right, so natural. And the use of two hands and two thumbs for a more comfortable position. But then everybody can read what I'm texting. No. They pointed to another article that said at neutral position, your head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. Yeah. But when you tilt it about 60 degrees, uh, relatively increases about 60 pounds. Wow. That's a lot of force on the cervical spine. So, no. yeah. Tex neck. I Tex was neck. recommending no a little good. hat with something to hold it up here. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to actually have to raise your arms that high. Dr. Tara Narula, thank you for your wisdom on this and so many other topics. <laughs>